Before we look at how we're going to do this, let's just clear all of this out and pretty much start from scratch. So we're not going to be sending anything through to our views whatsoever. And of course, over in here, we can get rid of these two as well. So this is back to the state where it is not going to work. So if we just go ahead and submit this, it's failed. So our goal is to get this working, but using the extension we saw earlier. So the next thing I'm going to do is just demonstrate a simple twig extension. So uh, by this, I mean that when we registered the view component over on our container, you can see here that we are adding an extension called twig extension, and this is part of the slim views package. So if we just open this up and take a look at it, this will kind of give us a clue as to how we can improve the cross site request forgery protection. So in here, we take in any dependencies that we need so we can pass anything through to here. And in this case, we are passing through our router and we're passing through the base path just here. Now, the reason for that is that over here, when we use things like path four, this actually generates a complete path for us. So again, if we just take a look at this, we have slim cross site request forgery update. So this will generate all of that for us. Now, the key to this is then being able to define out these twig simple functions. And this will call the current class and it will call a method that you've defined uh, like so. So essentially path for and base URL, the functionality from this comes from these two functions. Now, if we think about this, if we were to create our own extension and then go ahead and use it over here, we can pass through the cross site request forgery uh, package or dependency on our container, and we can pass through anything else that we need as well. And then we will have a function that we can use inside of views, which is exactly what we want to do. So what we're going to do is just create a very simple one just to kind of demonstrate this. And then we're going to implement uh, the actual full thing. Cause I always like to kind of play around with this before I get going. So in actual fact, we can create the kind of class that we're going to create now and then we can just test if this works so it makes sense to do this so inside of app because we're already auto loading here i'm just going to create a views folder and inside of here i'm going to create a cross-site request forgery extension like so and to be honest what we could probably do is just copy most of this over it's kind of just like boilerplate so let's go ahead and just paste this into here nothing wrong with doing that and then we can go ahead and just tidy this up. So obviously we don't need the commenting at the top. Uh, the namespace will be different. It will be app views now. And this is our cross site request forgery extension. Now it still extends twig extension. So we can leave that as it is, but let's get rid of these dependencies because we don't quite know at the moment what we are passing through. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of get name as well. And we need our get functions, but what I'm going to do is get rid of one of these and I'm just going to define out a test function. So I'm just going to say test and I'm going to call a test method. So once again, we can get rid of these two. We really don't need these. And we also don't need uh, this set base URL either. So let's define out a test function here and let's literally just return, let's say your name. So in my case, Alex. So now that we have this, as long as we add this into here, we should be able to use a test function within our views. So let's go ahead and do this. So it's under app views and it's our cross site request forgery extension. And at the moment we're not passing any dependencies through. So we'll just get rid of them. So as long as we've done everything correctly, what we should be able to do now is somewhere on this page, use that function. So let's just come anywhere on here and go ahead and say test like so, and then we see that works. So this is the kind of basis of getting this working. Now what we can do is actually make this work to output some markup for us just to make our lives a lot easier. So over in our extension, what do we need to pass into this in order to extract the information from our cross site request forgery uh, package? Well, of course, we need to send through that guard class. So let's go ahead and do this. It's as simple as saying container cross site request forgery or container get cross site request forgery, whatever you want to do. And now over in our extension, we can accept this in. So let's bring back our constructor just in here. And I'm going to type in this. So at the top, I'm going to use slim cross site request forgery and guard. And let's just fix that up. And now I can type in this here, bring this in and go ahead and set it to a property and then we can use anything we want on that. So this 
guard equals guard. Go ahead and create our property up here, like so, brilliant. So now what we can do is create a cross site request forgery field function, which is exactly what we want to do. And we're gonna call cross site request forgery field method. Uh, but of course, we're gonna keep convention with function names. We're gonna have underscores with our method names within this class, we're gonna use camel casing. So all we need to do in here now, and really you can separate this out into multiple methods if you want to tidy it up, is literally here, just return to markup. So what I've chosen to do is just in single quotes because we are outputting markup, literally just write all my markup in here. And then we can use uh, the guard class here to go ahead and extract out the token name key, the token name, and the value key and the value. So pretty simple. So all we really need to do in here then is just create some hidden inputs. And I can't use my macros here, so I'm gonna have to manually type all of these out. So type is hidden, and we have a name of course, and we have a value. Let's duplicate this down, and this is gonna be our other one. So we pretty much now do exactly what we did before, but this time we're not passing it down to our views. So for the name, let's go ahead and concatenate on this guard get token name key. So just as we saw before, and the same for our value as well. Let's go ahead and concatenate on this guard get token name. And like I was saying earlier, you can separate each of these uh, fields out into separate methods if you want. Uh, there's not really much point because we're always going to, you know, we're always going to need both of them. So uh, it's entirely up to you what you want to do. So for our last one, then it's get token value key. And for the value, it's this guard get token value. And we are done. So that really is as simple as it gets. We now have our extension. We are registering this extension, passing through our cross site request for review package on our container. We're adding it to all routes. And in a minute, I'm going to show you how to add this to individual routes if you don't want it on all of your routes. And we should be good to go. So what we can do now is just make sure we didn't break anything, come over to home. And instead of using that silly uh, function we created a minute ago, we're actually going to use the cross site request for tree field function. Now, uh, at the moment, this isn't going to work because by default, uh, Twig will escape all output, which is exactly what you want. So you're going to get the following. But this is good to see that it works. So we've got cross site request for rename value, and it looks like all of this is OK. Uh, so there we go. So now to actually get this working, we just need to use the raw filter within Twig. And this will go ahead and actually add it to our form. We click update and it works. So there we go. That is a simple as it gets. You can include this on every form and by default we have it uh, enabled or at least cross-site request forgery protection enabled for all routes. Now if you wanted to add it say to just the upgrading of a subscription, what you're going to need to do is not only add it to your post route just here, so this is how we add uh, middleware for individual routes, you are of course going to need to add it for this one as well because this is uh, actually generating the token. So when we land on this view, this is generating the token. So we need the middleware in there for it to be able to actually uh, generate it, show it on the form, and then go ahead and check it here. So this will work in exactly the same way, but it just means you have a little bit more flexibility if you wanted to exclude certain uh, routes from this. So you could just add it to uh, any way you wanted. But for most purposes, all routes protected by cross-site request forgery is a good idea. And you can see now that this works as normal. So there we go, a simple twig extension to go ahead and output all of the cross-site request forgery information that we need. So it is super convenient to include in our views.